The next thing is the right to uh, delete. And that means that people can make a request to delete, for you to delete all of the information that you have about them. And in order to do that, actually in order to do either of these, you need to know where your information is. Now, the marketing folks and the IT folks probably are thinking, okay, well, deleting the information is one, not easy, but two, really like counterproductive for all the analytics that I would like to run in this data. Uh, and that's true, except that if you are able to find a way to delete, the in, to anonymize the information, uh, like actually anonymize the information, then you can do that. And the only problem with that is it's more difficult than it sounds because you, in order for the information to be, in order for it to really be de-identified, it needs to really be de-identified. So the deal is um, you need to find a way to make the information de-identified. If you can really kill all the identifiers or anonymize them, that's one way. The other way is if you are really using only like aggregated insights, if that's what you're doing as opposed to for the person, then keeping the aggregated insights would add the underlying data. You can still do that after the delete request. And then the other thing which is interesting is, well, what do you do if somebody wants their data deleted, but they're also a member of your loyalty program? And your loyalty program collects information by email, it's by email address, like you get coupons to your email, or it's by phone number and you get coupons to your phone number or something, well, what do you do? That's a question that we've been asked by clients and recently was answered in the new version of the regulations. And the answer is that if you get that request, you can take advantage of one of the exceptions to the right to delete. There is one exception that says, that you can keep information, you're not obligated to delete it, if it is reason, if it is necessary for an internal use that's reasonably related to something that's expected by the consumer, right? So in this situation, in the situation of the loyalty program, somebody says, you know what, kill all of this stuff. I don't want anybody knowing about the 50,000 burgers that I ordered in the last three months, like kill that, but I really need my discount for the next 50,000 burgers that I'm gonna get from now on, right? In that situation, what you do is you actually kill the past history and whatever else you need, the browsing history, the IP, the profiling of person prone to order burgers or whatever, but you keep their email address or phone number or whatever it is that you're using for the loyalty program and keep doing that because it is reasonably related to an internal use that's expected by the consumer. Now, what's the catch here? It needs to be, it's two things. Number one, in order to use this exception, it needs to really be reasonably related to something that the consumer expects. So that means that you kind of need to tell them up front that this is happening and that, you're, and, and that you're using the information. Now, in the loyalty program, CCPA actually imposes a number of requirements for financial incentives and discounts, and you need to disclose this stuff up front anyway, so it would be covered. And the other thing is, if you're keeping information after a request to delete, you have to tell people what you're keeping and why, right? So we've deleted everything, but we've kept your email address so we can, one, send you loyalty program stuff, and two, or we've kept your phone number for the coupons and we've kept your email address to unsubscribe you or subtract you from the email emails or whatever, right?